Well, good morning and welcome to Little Workroom Crafts Patchwork and Quilting Tutorial number four. Now, this is going to be the last one in this collection. And uh, today we're going to bind our little piece. And uh, so I'll show you how we should do binding on a quilt or anything, really. And then right at the end, because I had such a great feedback, I'm going to do a special of hand quilting. My favourite. I love hand quilting quilting so i'll show you how to uh, tie your knot hide your knot because we like a knot loss back and so on today is the first of june 2020 and it is nine o'clock in the morning so i do apologize for the way i sound <laughs> but hay fever is really bad here at the moment over here in the uk and i am suffering but hey ho we've got to do this okay and then uh, on Wednesday, obviously, there's going to be my normal uh, fortnightly podcast. Okay, then. So what we'll do is we'll hop right in. So putting on the binding of a quill is, is extremely simple. You know, I don't want people to be put off. You don't have to cut cross on uh, cut on the bias or nothing like that. It is a simple and easy way that we do the binding. Okay, then. So let's get down to it. Okay, as you can see, this is the piece that we all did last week, okay, and um, I've got my wadding and my backing still um, obviously on my piece. Now, when I used to teach, um, you know, a few years ago, I always said to them, my ladies and gentlemen, I will say, that um, always look at your piece like a house, so you've got your long pieces here, which is your walls, and then you've got your ceiling, which is here, which is the shorter edge, and the floor here. Even if it's a square, look at it like a house. So, right, there we go. There's a square. So put it down and look. So you've got your two walls, your floor here, and your ceiling here. Okay, so what you want to do is cut strips. I'm going to bind mine with a cream. You can bind it with anything. You can even do scrappy binding where you can just cut random strips. Doesn't matter what length, but as long as the width is two and a half inches, you'll be fine. Now, you can press, um, fold them over and press. I personally don't, It, you know, but a lot of people do. And then you lay that. Let's see if you've got, yeah, I've got you. Right, so lay this right against the edge of the the, the the ceiling basically okay hang on let's recap actually i should, shouldn't have really used a plane to be honest right um hold on right okay i'm back what i've done is i ain't going to use this piece um but because i want to use the cream on my piece but i will show you what i mean so okay there's your two and a half inch strip right side so you press i have pressed this wrong side to wrong side okay then lay that on top like that okay right okay so i have done that put that there get my quilting pins and pop some pins in like so so you actually put it to the edge of your patchwork not to the edge of the wadding and the backing okay let's push that back a bit that's better <laughs> okay let's go like that right okay now we'll take over to the sewing machine <clears throat> right then okay so you need your walking foot on your machine for this now i'm lucky enough that my walking foot is exactly a quarter of an inch now on my other machine it's not so if you could just practice and find the, the width of the uh the quarter inch seam because this does need to be a quarter inch seam but um if you use your normal quarter inch foot it will just get puckers underneath 
so um, because it's not feeding through the layers so you know just try or if you find that you you struggling because as I say the quarter inch foot is about a, is a little bit wider it's about three eighths then just cut your binding a little bit wider it doesn't really make no difference so um let's go ahead right so you use your normal stitch length so you go back to your 2.5 and grey thread on the machine like we did before and we just go right down okay and just sew the binding through the two layers of the binding through the patchwork the wadding and the backing so i'm going to do that and i'll do it on this side and that side and then i'll show you how to do the top and the bottom so i'll be back very soon right then okay so i've got both my walls on as i say you know pretending this is a house now we can cut away and try and cut it you know as close or as under uh your um Binding piece as close as we'll do it on both sides like so just quickly righty ho just like that now this is where I'm going to use my binding clips okay so my lovely friend and work colleague Debbie, bless her heart, sent me a um, <laughs> um, a new blade for my rotary cutter. Thank you, Debs. You've been an angel. <laughs> right then. So what I would like you to do is cut this piece of binding off to there, and yet again to there. Okay, <clears throat> so they are going to be now long enough to do the other other um, other sides. Then you fold that over to there, and now that folds over to there, and we clip. Now you can pin. I used to pin years ago before these were actually thought of. <laughs> And uh, you do get a, a bit of pins. <laughs> um, you can get pricked occasionally. So these do actually... Um, let's move this around here. There we go. So pull that over like so. And clip. As I say, with pins you can get, you know, pricked a bit. But, you know. <laughs> it does the job if you haven't got any binding clips but we use these for so many different things as well and then you hand stitch this piece down um i will show you the hand stitch actually when i actually sit and but just before i do the quilting um um tutorial but now if you look see how neat that is there along there it really is. Right, now, we're going to pretend that I've stitched this part. So let's get this part here. Over. Just to hold it. As I say, we're going to pretend I've hand stitched that for now. Let's tuck that over like that. Now, to do your, your floor and your ceiling, get your piece of binding. Now, this one has to be a little bit longer. So, let's move that down there and move that down there so you can see. So, this one, if you stay over, start over, I'd say about half an inch because you're going to trim it away anyway, okay? And then get your pins. Pin it on. like so and then we'll go over to the sub shade and i'll show you what to do next right then okay let's see if i can do this the best i can okay, yep you can so you just stitch across again as we've done at the sides 
go across now shall I sit I think I'll be better if I sat here actually to show you what you've got to do but we'll see how it goes so now you've got that piece of binding on what you've got to do is cut that away now you can do this piece with a with this side with a rotary cutter um, but I just do it with a pair of scissors to be honest so go right in so you can um <clears throat> take that piece off that could go in the bin now right this is the exciting part <laughs> okay so forward that over like that let's get rid of that piece of thread like so okay now what we're going to do is I'll go to trim that about mm, just over a quarter of an inch. So we'll say three eighths, shall we? Then you fold that in over to the back like so and like that. Then fold your piece over like so. Get a clip. And see how nice and square that edge is. And that is basically how the easiest way to bind a, a quilt. You can do it on the outside of a cushion. Honestly, um, bags, if you want to do just square bags. You know, it is the easiest way of binding anything, really. So, right. What we'll do is I'll go across and I'll do it again one more time this end. So pull that down like so. Oh, let's get it up here. Right, that's better. About, as I say, about three eighths. Snip that piece off. Get rid of your threads. That hangs over. I do like it neat, like so. And that goes there. Push that over, like that. Push that down, like that. And there you are, look. A nice, neat corner. Okay, right then. Now we'll get to the hand sewing. Okay then, right, as you see, I've got all my sides, there we go. So there it is, all um, clipped on, at the first stage done. Now, for my back, I am going to be using my Aurifil um, cotton, I just love this thread. <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me, this blooming hay fever. <laughs> and um, what I have come, um, brought all together, because obviously as I say, I'm going to be doing some hand quilting in a bit after this, is I've... Um, I've got some thread magic. Now, this is brilliant stuff. Um, you know, if uh, beeswax, because I do have a block of beeswax, um, can't be got, thread magic is very good. And this one is a very good product because um, you put the thread... Oops, let's pick it up, Davila. <laughs> put the thread in the grooves, put the lid on, and then pull it through. So it's absolutely brilliant. It really, really is good stuff. Um, so I would, ooh, look at it, ooh. <laughs> I would definitely uh, recommend the thread magic. Um, as I say, it coats the it coats your uh, your thread really, really well. Also, if you are a thimble wearer like I am, you can get these. These are actually quite hard to get hold of. I've had to go to quilt shows to get these. Um, they sit on the finger nicely and because they've got an angle it actually do work nicely and if you notice for some reason I don't know why I put my thimble on this finger normally you'd have your thimble on this finger um, but I don't know why this is the way I've always done it I have my thimble on this finger this is the traditional um, 
metal thimble now this actually is if i remember right because i bought this donkeys years ago i think it's a prim one and what i like about this metal one is you've got a groove at the top because some of them don't so the needle sits in and it can't actually um just pop out while you're using it so i do use this one or there is the little leather um thimblets now um i also use these because when i'm actually doing my knitting and i'm knitting socks i simply get a hole in my finger and um, i will put one of these on and they are reusable as you can see i've used this one before so i normally use this as well for my um uh, knitting so, <laughs> so i don't get the it doesn't put too much of a hole in the the finger and i don't get anything any horrible stuff on my um, yard on my socks but as i say they're reusable they ain't that cheap but you do get a lot more than this in a packet um but they are very good as well okay then so here's my little desktop needle threader now i swear by this it's a clover made it's amazing okay now in here i do actually have um a quilting needle um but which I am going to be using for the hand quilting as well. But when you're actually using the back, doing putting the back on, you can just use a normal sharp, just a normal, you know, needle. Now, with this, obviously, I've just um, treated my thread. So I put that, the needle in, the little bit at the top there, push that slightly down and put it in like that. Bob's your uncle, it's thread. Basically, it's done. That is how easy it is. As I say, I've had mine years and they're really, really good. Now, what you do um, realise is, if you've just noticed, I actually thread my needle while I'm still connected to the spool. So then I'm coming off in the right direction, okay? And then you don't normally never go more than, you know, a foot, 12 inches. So what you normally do is you have your needle, I normally have my needle threaded and then go down to your elbow, okay? That is normally roughly about 12 inches and that's even got a little cutter on it like that so it is handy right then so let's go into just doing the so you've got your knots Ooh, there we go so the stitch you use is you go in it's basically the hem or the applique stitch depending on what you know what you want to call it tuck your knot in there Ooh, like so come on here you go that's it right and then you just go I, I think i've done this stitch on my other quilt but i will show you know the other one i did the english paper piecing so you go slightly back behind pick up a piece of fabric now you haven't really got to worry about picking up threads like we did on uh, well like we do on a plique just make sure you don't go through to the front and then do a straight, come up at an angle, and then that will be invisible like that. So just go slightly behind, come out, up at an angle. There you go. And the little stitch is invisible. I love it, especially when you like have a double or a single quilt a bed quilt on your lap and you're sitting there in especially in the winter with it on your lap doing the binding <laughs> i just absolutely love this stage i really do but then again it's handwork I, i'm i really am more of a handwork person so that's it see see how neat it is and um, you don't have to worry about folding anything over because your fold is already done for you and there we go and you do that all the way around and do the binding and that is how neat it looks on the front okay then so i'm hoping to get this piece finished um on um for wednesday's podcast and then i will be able to show it but i am going to do a, a bit of hand quilting on it now just so you can see what the hand quilting looks like okay so I'll, I'll get everything all set up i'll stop doing this in a minute if i can <laughs> um i will get it all set up and i will be back in a moment 
Okay, I just thought I'd pop on quickly because I, last week I had um, a question about if you've got a big quilt, about rolling it under the machine with the um, machine quilting and um, how to get it underneath the throat. Well, you know, obviously some machines have bigger throats, especially for that purpose, but you still actually have to um, use a tool of some description. So what I will do is you... You basically, because you've got to start from the centre and work your way out, you roll up the side that you're not going to be working on. And that's the side that actually tucks underneath your, your throat of your machine. Now, as you all know, people that's been following me, <laughs> I like to find a way of getting a, a tool that work for the job without spending the money because it's got the word patchwork and quilting or knitting or whatever on because as soon as those words actually go attached to an item the price has come times double treble okay so these ones here i will say are proper quilting roll you know grips okay so basically it's flat it will lay actually onto the base of your machine all right and so what you do is you roll it up clip that on at the top and the bottom and, and have a couple depending on the size of the quilt a couple in the middle and then that actually keeps it all rolled up and neatly okay so these are what they call quilting grips these ones are the same thing but these were free in a magazine that um, a friend gave me because she weren't using them so she gave them to me but you can buy metal ones with the word patchwork and quilting on it or you can go to a cycle shop and buy cycle clips because they're exactly the same thing they do exactly the same job and clip it on and they're half the price so what what you're paying for one of these you could get a couple of pairs of these and have enough four and have enough okay so basically that is what you do you actually just roll up the quilt that, and then that's the side that's actually going underneath the throat of the machine and you clip them now when i've actually had under here a double or a king cut size quilt because i have i have actually you know quilted them straight lines i will say um but with these i will have two one either side one either end one in the middle and then the piece that's hanging over this way to reduce the weight you um Let's see, let's see how uh, if you haven't got a workbench like like I, I'm lucky enough to have my you know my workbench in my workroom but if you haven't got that then uh, prop it on a chair or you know just so it holds the weight so then it's not pulling this way away from your needle and away from the machine um it, when I've done hand quilting before on big big quilts and I have hand quilted big quilts I normally go downstairs lay it over the dining room table after I extended it out and have chairs all the way around to hold the weight and then I get my arm right underneath into the middle and then start quilting that way because it is easier if you do actually have the weight um you know held in a way that um at the, then it's going to reduce the pressure of it pulling away from you all the time but yeah hopefully this has answered the question you can get these as i say quite expensive i was lucky enough to get these gifted to me years ago but go to a cycle shop get cycle clips they do the same job right then okay <laughs> oh gosh i have actually brought over another piece okay this one you'll probably recognize from when i did um tested uh the the 70 30 waddings and um this is my um, hand piece and I've still got the label look I never actually did manage to get it finished so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to quilt in these because you can see I've done hand quilting around there and I have gone and done um, um, I'm going to do some pieces in there now I will explain I like personally a longer quilting stitch okay you know there is some quilt police out there i will say that will say oh no 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 you can't do it like that you know it has to be smaller really really small stitch so i mean i think 12 or 14 stitches to the inch blah 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 well i personally don't you know that is not me i like the longer stitch and i just think it looks it looks more more traditional in my opinion now what we are going to sit and talk about just for a moment is the different needles okay 
right let's take this thimble off now if you prefer a longer needle because quilted needles as you will see are very tiny uh, because they reckon smaller the needle smaller the stitch but as you as i've just said that is just not me so when it comes to needles you can use a sharps for quilting needles okay now what you've got to remember is higher the number smaller the needle so this is an 11 and i think 12 is the smallest in the sharps so i would personally say go for a 9 or a 10 you've got a good eye on that okay and that will be absolutely fine you don't want it really fat because it's just going to put more holes in the work that you do not want okay as you're going to see now now these are the what they call the golden eye look at the size of those needles they are absolutely teeny weeny and you know they are a thread <laughs> without me going into bad language and um you know it's it's more hassle than it's worth to be honest now you can also get because in my english paper piecing tutorial you notice that i did use the black gold needles um for the um, but i used the applique ones for the actual stitching now these ones are the gold black and these are the um the gold black quilting needles okay now i'm going to show you if i can do it without because they are very that actually is if you can see i don't know there you go i think that is the length of that needle it is let's measure that uh, yeah three quarters of an inch long and they're not easy to use they're really really not easy to use so but my all-time favorites which as you can see i've got an empty packet and i'm out of um and i can't get any until i get back to work are the john james big eyed quilters now they're small needles they're very sharp but they've got a big eye they literally do you know what they say on the packet basically they are brilliant but um i've looked through all my needle tin and i haven't got a spare packet which is very very unusual for me um when it comes to these now i have got here a size 10 as i say you know Go for the the, the 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 ten or a nine because they've got the bigger eye and they're a little chunky. They are short, I will say, but they are brilliant because you've got a big eye on them. So because I haven't got any of those, <laughs> I have found in my stash the John James Pebble. Now this is the quilting one. Okay, um, they have got good. Um, so it's a good size. It's got a, a fairly good eye. It's a bit chunkier than what i would normally use but hey ho we're gonna go with it okay so also when it comes to thread you use a different thread now this one is a yli yeah a yli um quilting thread i've got loads of different colors i just love them because they come on wooden spools. <laughs> so but you can get um gutterman do actually hold on uh there we go that's an another hand quilting thread in the gutterman but as you see um i don't know if you can actually um they are they're very stiff um they're a cotton but they're a lot stiffer and you cannot put this on your sewing machine you really really can't um so don't please 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 don't try it could damage the machine now as you will find out with the journey with me on my youtube channels uh, on my youtube channel that i love history i absolutely adore history i did history at school i just love it so when i do a craft i look into the history of it and um i was fascinated to see obviously i can understand why this is stronger because it's got to hold the three layers but why is it so stiff and many many years ago obviously in in america when they used to use the on the prairies they used to use the flower sacks because the flower sack used to be really really pretty fabric it used to be decorated and they used to undo the actual thread that used to hold the, the sacks together now some ladies actually used to hang quilt with it others used to if they didn't have a quilt on the go or if they weren't quilters used to crochet the doilies because obviously they used absolutely everything so they used to sit there and unpick 
the um, thread that was actually joining the sack and then um, they used to, uh, you know, either to say they used to hand quilt with it or they used to um, crochet doilies. Okay, so I think then we'll get into how we do our quilting. Okay then, right then, I've had to uh, adapt things slightly because my battery nearly died out, so <laughs> you wouldn't believe the setup I've got now because <laughs> you're all plugged in. Right then, okay, let's get started, shall we? Now, to mark a quilt, you know, for the top, if you want to know, you know, if you want the distance and everything to be correct, because you could also, you know, you could go a quarter of an inch all the way around there. You can get these uh, water erasable pens. They're always blue in colour. Okay, and for um, handwork, they are okay because they do last, but you have to test your fabric first. Now, the air raisable ones, which are a purple ink, um, if you're actually doing handwork, they will actually erase, obviously, with air eventually before you've probably finished your quilt. So I personally don't like putting ink on my quilts, but, you know, we'll see. Obviously, there is also out there the friction pens, which you can use, but you know i don't as uh, i don't like putting ink on or there is what they call the hera now this is a japanese tool i've had this absolutely donkey's years and this is what i actually do mark most of my stuff with uh, what you could do is let's get uh, this line here say for instance you wanted a quarter of an inch or just a line that went right across like that so you put pressure on and all it does is put there you go. If you can see that line. Oh, hang on. Sorry, you're not down enough. <laughs> Sorry about that. So let's do that piece again. So say measure a quarter of an inch from there, from your um, piece that you want. And you just put a little bit of pressure on like that. See, and then you've just got a crease mark. And then you stitch over that and eventually that does wear out. But there's no chemicals going on your work whatsoever. So I do like the Hera. You also can get a, where are you? Here we go. A smaller Hera as well, which this one's got a point on it, which is handy for a plique and so on. Um, but yeah, if you've got like really, really tiny bits, you can have that one as well. But as I say, I've had these absolutely donkey's years and I do use these all the time. Right then, so what we do is that we're going to thread our needle. This one you don't have to cope with thread magic or anything. I personally wouldn't because it's already stiff and kind of got a coating on it. Yet again, go to the elbow. And then we'll put a knot in. Like so. Now... You come up at the back where you want to go, pull it through until you hit that knot. Now I always put my needle then in my work, flip your work over and there you see, let's get my little pointy tool, if you can see up, yep, see it there, there is my knot, okay, and then you actually hang on to this piece here which is the piece that you've actually just put in the work hold put it over like that pick up your backing pull it through and it's gone okay so that's your first knot hitting hitting as soon as you feel it hit that wadding you know it's in place then as i say the stitch is an easy stitch. You can obviously do decorative stitches if you want to, but traditionally it's just a running stitch. But what you've got to just try and remember, so you go in, is the front and the back is roughly... Hold on, let's get it this way. That's better. That's it. Now we're in the right direction. And it's a running stitch. Now, I always, yes, I know, I have, I can rock, like they call rock, and you go in and out, in and out. I personally don't like to rock. I just love sitting 
and just doing a little run and stitch so go into there and then you'll see in a moment I know I haven't marked this side but go into there little run and stitch like so go around see look and see I don't know if you can see that um I will see. let me um let me just get to the end here because I want to show you how we cast off and about a quarter of an inch see now let me see if you can see obviously you can see there how that has actually been dented in oh that's better now you can see here how that has just given that a little ridge you know it just gives it a little bit more detail and when it comes to hand quilting i think you can you know you can mark up your quilt in every all different patterns and and that yeah fair enough it takes longer but you know i always say what well, you know isn't a race so just a little run and stitch to fix it down as i say the front um just as long as it's about the same length of the stitch as it is at the back and then if you turn over because you do go through all the three layers there is your little stitches there and then to cast off you pull your thread up to the back tie a knot and take it down to about a quarter of an inch everything's about a quarter of an inch <laughs> like so away from your work and then you go back in to where you've come up you do not go through to the front okay you can feel all this you do not go through to the front you hit the wadding basically and then hear that click you can pull it through then go in again where you've just come up but in a different direction and then i always do it one more time like so look at that then the holes disappear and that is a complete knotless back and that is how we like to do our hand quilting it is so much fun it really really is i just love sitting and doing it i really do okay then so i know this has been a bit of a journey over the past four weeks and i hope that you have actually learned something and i have actually um, been contacted by a lovely lady i wish i could remember her name that um, and sent me a photograph of a little um a little mini quilt that she'd done for her basket and it's beautiful and it's lovely to see that you know that you are out there <laughs> and um you know following us along so that is basically sorry the uh, four um, episodes of piecing cutting piecing layering up binding and now obviously the hand quilting at the end and if you've got any questions ask leave a message down them down below I have got I'll leave in the in the description box and the places where you can actually find me if you want to do it more privately um but yeah please um please give it a go give it a go it's absolutely brilliant so until next time because I hopefully in the next few months there I will um, I'm, I'm hoping to do a um like crazy patchwork is brilliant absolutely fantastic to do because with that you can actually hand embroider on top which was how it was done traditionally so that's a lot of fun and um appliques I love my applique and uh, all stuff like that so I'm hoping in the future that there'll be there'll be more patchwork and quilting tutorials okay then well I'm going to say goodbye now and um yes I'm ever so sorry about the way I sound but as I say it's hay fever <laughs> and uh, hopefully it will be shifting soon it's supposed to go cold again at the weekend they reckon so hopefully it will the old grass pollen will disappear and um and I'll see you all soon on my next um episode of little workroom crafts so take care stay safe keep positive and happy crafting bye